Faustus Cornelius Sulla, Keister in 54 BCE. The son of the famous Roman dictator Lucius Cornelius Sulla, Faustus only rose to the office of Keister, the minimum entry point for the Roman Senate. Given what we know of the Roman Republic, this was a world where if you had the right family name and wealth, you were guaranteed political influence and power regardless of your personal shortcomings. How else do we explain the careers of people like Metellus Scipio? However, Faustus had both one of the most famous names in Rome from his father Sulla. He was a member of one of the great families of Rome, going back to the foundation of the Republic, the Cornelii, and he was extraordinarily wealthy. Yet, he did not achieve anywhere near the level of political success that his father had. And this is something we have to keep in mind. When his father Sulla had been dictator, he had eliminated many of his personal enemies. So Faustus, in theory, should have inherited a world which was much more friendly to anyone named Sulla than it would be to any other politician with any other name. So what went wrong? In this video, I am going to try to answer the question of why Faustus fell far short of his much more famous father. Faustus and his twin sister Fausta are generally believed to have been born prior to the year 86. The significance of the year 86 is that this was the first time that their father, Lucius Cornelius Sulla, had marched on Rome in order to protect his personal interest and fight against Gaius Marius and Senna and his other enemies in Rome. Later on, he would follow that precedent and establish himself as a dictator in the proper sense. But let us not tell the story of Lucius, but rather focus on Faustus. Faustus's mother was Sulla's fourth wife, Caecilia Metella. And when the dictator died in 78, it fell to Faustus to be his only surviving male heir. We don't know exactly how many other sons Lucius Cornelius Sulla had. We know that there was one son who bore his exact name who had died as a young man, um, but he may very well have had other children by his other wives who also did not make it for whatever reason. After his father's death in 78, Faustus and Fausta were then raised by a family friend, the well-connected Lucius Licinius Lucullus, a close political ally of the dictator and one of the most prominent men during the next generation. Having grown up with Lucullus as guardian, Faustus was fated to fall into the shadow of another protege of his late father, Pompey the Great. When Faustus first came of age in the 60s, Pompey was in the midst of making his major accomplishments. He was already the first man in Rome, and he was about to put himself even further ahead of the pack. And ironically, Faustus would be one of the people helping him to achieve that level of glory. Pompey was in the midst of his Eastern campaigns when Faustus came of age. We don't know exactly what year Faustus came of age or when he began his military service under Pompey. All we know is that the first time that he enters into the sources for doing anything of note was in the year 63. When Pompey captured Jerusalem that year, Faustus held the distinction of being the first man to climb over the walls of the temple. And while this was a fairly minor achievement and not something terribly unusual, it was always a good sign when an ambitious Roman noble would distinguish himself for valor on the battlefield, and going over the wall first was one key way to do that. Many of the other great men in Roman history had done similar deeds in their first major campaign, or one of their earlier campaigns. In 59, Faustus then married Pompey's daughter Pompeia, and Pompeia is, so far as we know, the only wife that Faustus ever had. And as the son-in-law of Pompey, Faustus was now duty-bound to try to make his father-in-law more successful, and this might account for why he never tried to claim the mantle of Sulla and more or less let Pompey have it. While Faustus never weaponized his name in such a way as to seize the mantle 
of the conservative cause in Rome from others, he did definitely want to claim a part of that legacy. And he was well aware, I think, just from his actions, that his main assets in life were his father's name, his inherited political allies, who included Lucullus, Pompey, and many others who were prominently placed, and his wealth. In the year 60, after having returned from the East at long last, Faustus sponsored gladiatorial games in Rome to honor his father. The real meaning of such games for an ambitious young man like Faustus was to remind everyone of his father, not that they needed too much reminding, and also to introduce himself to them formally as the son and heir of Sulla. In 56, Faustus issued coinage in honor of Sulla and Pompey. By this point, of course, Pompey was already his father-in-law, so Faustus was not only claiming to be related to Sulla, the best man of the last generation, but also to Pompey, the most prominent man at that time in the 50s. So Faustus was always trying to emphasize his connections to people who were better known and to make sure that people were aware of his existence and his connections to more important figures in Rome, which was probably a pretty wise political strategy for a young man trying to make his name and make sure that people knew who he was. Romans, at least Romans of the elite senatorial class, judged themselves and each other on the offices and honors that they had held within the Senate. This is what determined rank, precedence, and importance. This is how you added to your family's um, general prestige. And we find that Faustus' CV is a little bit weak. By the year 57, he had been elected as an augur. This was a pretty solid achievement, except that as a patrician, it was kind of expected that he would be elected to some religious office or other, whether it was as a pontiff or an augur. Um, not really that big of a deal, but again, good to have. In 54, he was elected as a keister, and it was only then or possibly after the conclusion of his office that he was officially admitted to the Senate. And if you look at the cursus honorum, it was possible for a patrician to hold the office of keister as young as the age of 28, whereas a plebeian would have to wait until the age of 30. Well, this is a little odd for Faustus because he would have been around 32 or so if we think that he was born in the year 86. So he was four years later than the minimum age. So that is a bit curious. Most likely because he was keister in 54, he had to serve abroad as a pro keister in 53. And this meant that he was not in Rome during the tumult which surrounded the death of Clodius, the famous orator and street gang leader. In the year 52, after the um, destruction that Clodius's outraged followers wrought on Rome, the Senate commissioned Faustus to rebuild the Curia Hostilia, which had been one of the buildings that had been burned down or destroyed during the rioting following uh, Clodius's death. Part of the reason why Faustus got this commission is that he was really rich and his father had a personal connection with the Curia Hostilia since he had been the last person to really renovate or make changes to that structure. So he embarked upon a project of rebuilding and as an honor to him, the Senate let the building be renamed as the Curia Cornelia. However, um, soon thereafter, within about a decade or so, we'd see that there is a civil war between the Pompeians and Caesarians. Of course, Julius Caesar and, and his grandnephew Augustus win. And they inherited the mantle of Marius, who'd been an opponent of the dictator Sulla. And because of that, they decided to rename the structure yet again, and it became the Curia Julia to honor their family. So Faustus's building legacy was very short-lived, but it was a real thing. And had history gone a little differently, he would have gone down as at least one of the many builders of Rome. After 54, we have no indication that Faustus 
held any additional office. In January of 49, the civil war between Julius Caesar and Pompey the Great broke out in earnest, and Faustus sided with his father-in-law, sharing with him an exile in Epirus and Greece as they raised additional troops and resolved to fight Julius Caesar in the east. In his capacity as a senator fighting for the optimate cause, Faustus served at both Pharsalus in 48 and at Thapsus in 46. Following the defeat at Thapsus, which is in North Africa, Faustus was traveling with the senior general Lucius Afranius and trying to escape to Spain where Pompeian forces were being raised, but the pair of them happened to be captured by one of Caesar's lieutenants, Publius Sidius. Of all of Caesar's generals, Publius Sidius is one of the most poorly attested. He is described as a mercenary, and that is very odd since most of the other generals were low-ranking aristocrats of some kind or other. At any rate, though, when Sidious captured the pair of Afranius and Faustus, he chose to kill Faustus immediately for reasons that are unclear. I have to guess what the reason was, and I think that it had to do with Sidious maybe being the descendant of one of Sulla the Dictator's many victims. But it's hard to say. Perhaps while he was keister or pro keister or maybe even in some private capacity of business, Faustus had wronged Publius Sidious in some way, and Sidious was exacting his revenge. At any rate, it's not clear why Sidious was so opposed to Faustus, but clearly there was some kind of bad blood there, and Sidious made good his opportunity to get rid of someone he hated. At the start of this video, I posed the question as to whether or not Faustus Cornelius Sulla was an underachiever, and I'd like to revisit that idea. A patrician was able to hold the office of Keister as early as the age of 28, but Faustus was at least 32 when he held the office in 54. It makes sense for Faustus to follow the requirements of the cursus and norm that his father had laid down and to do so stringently. But he should have been able to win more offices by the year 49 when he would have been at least 37 years old. In fact, by the age of 37, as a patrician, he would have been eligible for the praetorship. So why did he not achieve more than he did? Was he simply unambitious? Apolitical? Was he younger than we think? Was the assumption that he was already alive in 86 false, and perhaps he was not born until a bit later? Was there blowback against his father's prescriptions and dictatorship that we're not aware of, which fell more heavily upon the man bearing the name Sulla than it did upon his actual functionaries, such as Pompey and Lucullus? It's really hard to say. And... Um, Unfortunately, we don't quite have enough information to truly answer the question. However, I think that any of these explanations could be part of why Faustus Cornelius Sulla fell so far short of his father's expectations, or I guess the expectations his father would have had had he lived long enough to really see his son reach adulthood. Another interesting thing that we know about Faustus is that he was a connoisseur and grower of some of the best wine in all of Rome. The most famous vintage of Roman wine was Falernian, and Faustus grew so much of it that there was even a sub-variety called Faustian Salernian named after him. He happened to own the central slopes of Mount Falernus, and he was the person who was producing the best version of Rome's most popular kind of wine. So maybe he was not all that politically successful and maybe he was unambitious, but perhaps he was more interested in other things and in those areas of life he found a kind of gratification and purpose that politics didn't give him. But again, we don't know. And since the Romans would have judged him based solely on his achievements and the honors that he had been given publicly, we have to conclude that by the standards of his own day, 
he was not a successful man and he let down his family.